Uh, so this video is a brief description of the electron probability density, okay? So in the Bohr's model of the hydrogen atom, the electron was visualized to revolve around the nucleus in a circular path of a definite radius. Um, and the radius was given by this equation, which is uh, r equal to n square a naught, okay? Um, and theta, the zenith angle, was visualized to be 90 degrees and the azimuth angle, uh, phi, uh, as changing with time. Uh, but quantum theory modifies this in two ways. So first, it shows that there is no definite value for r theta or phi, but only a probability of finding the electron at a certain location. And this is a consequence of the wave nature of the electron. Uh, and second, it showed that it is not valid to think of the electron as revolving around the nucleus, okay, in any conventional sense, because the probability density, uh, psi, um, absolute psi square of finding the electron is independent of time and varies from one place to another. Uh, so we will now find the probability density of an electron in a hydrogen atom um, which is the probability of finding the electron at a certain location for various different quantum states. Uh, and as we have seen in the previous hydrogen atom video, the function psi can be separated into three uh, functions r, theta, and phi. Uh, and so the probability density can be written in this way. And we also know that the square of any function that is complex can be replaced by the product of the function and its complex conjugate. Uh, so let's first calculate the absolute square of phi, okay? So from the previous hydrogen atom video, we know that phi is equal to AE to the power I ML phi, where ML is the magnetic quantum number. Uh, and so the absolute of phi square is equal to the complex conjugate times uh, phi. So it is equal to a square e to the minus ml phi times e to the plus ml phi equal to a square. Uh, so this shows that the probability of finding the electron at a particular azimuth angle phi is constant, okay, and does not depend on phi. Uh, so this means that the electron's probability density is symmetric about the z-axis, right? Because it is independent of phi. Um, because the absolute uh, square of phi is a constant. Uh, so this part is a constant, okay? And calculations show that the radial part here does vary with r, the distance from the nucleus, and the variation is different for different combinations of the quantum numbers n and l. Uh, and also calculations show that this part here uh, does vary with the zenith angle theta for all quantum numbers l except for l equals zero which is the s states. Uh, so let's consider now the probability of finding the electron in a certain region. So from the previous quantum mechanics videos, we have seen how the probability of finding the electron in the infinitesimal volume element dv is uh, the uh, absolute of psi square dv. Uh, so this is dv in spherical coordinates, okay? So the probability pr dr of finding the electron in the hydrogen atom somewhere in the spherical shell between r and r plus dr uh, from the nucleus is given by this equation. Uh, so as you can see, PR dr is equal to r squared, the absolute of the function r squared dr. Uh, and this is because uh, both of these expressions here are each equal to 1, um, because the functions theta and phi are both uh, normalized functions. Uh, so, this figure shows the plot of the probability of finding the electron at a distance between r and r plus dr for various quantum states. Uh, so, as you can see, as expected for the 1s state, the probability of finding the electron is maximum at a naught, uh, which was predicted by Bohr, okay? Um, and this 1s state is known as the ground state of the electron. 
Uh, and for example, for an electron in a 2p state, uh, calculations show that the most probable distance of this electron from the nucleus uh, is at 4 um, a naught. okay? Uh, so this uh, radius is what was predicted by Bohr uh, for the principal quantum number n equal 2. Uh, so note here how for the 2s state, uh, the most probable location of the electron is not simply for a naught as predicted by Bohr. Uh, so uh, for n equal 2, uh, the prediction of Bohr of a radius of 4 a naught uh, applies for the state of 2p. And for n equal 3, the prediction of Bohr of a radius of 9 a naught applies to 3d not to 3p or 3s. Uh, so it turns out that the Bohr model predicts the most probable location for the electron in only one of the several possible states for a certain energy level or a certain uh, principal quantum number n. Uh, and that state uh, with the most probable location matching that of Bohr radius is the one with the highest angular momentum for that particular uh, principal quantum number n. Um, so here, uh, the highest angular momentum for n equal 1 is s, right? And for n equal 2 is p, and for n equal 3 is d. Um, so as you can see, the most probable locations for 1s, 2p, and 3d matches that of uh, Bohr prediction. Uh, and this makes sense, right? Because the state in which the angular momentum is highest for a certain energy level or a certain quantum number n uh, is the one where the angular momentum vector is near to the z-axis as possible. Uh, because when the angular momentum vector is close to the z-axis, it means that the probability density would be close to this equatorial plane where theta is equal to 90 degrees, okay? Um, and this is actually uh, the Bohr's uh, visualization of the atom. Uh, so Bohr visualized the electron revolving around the nucleus in definite orbits, okay? Uh, so for the energy state n equal 4, uh, the state that would have the most probable location of the electron matching that of uh, the one predicted by Bohr, which is 16 a naught, um, is the state 4f, because uh, 4f is the one with the highest angular momentum, so the one with the angular momentum close to the z-axis, and so the electron uh, probability density is close to the equatorial plane. Uh, so the figure here shows the electron probability density, which is absolute size square. Uh, so it is not absolute size square dv, which is the probability of finding the electron within a certain volume element, okay? But this one here is the probability density. Uh, so this uh, figure shows the probability density, which, as we said, uh, depends on r and theta, but is independent of phi. So it is symmetric about the z-axis. Uh, and note here how for the s states, the probability density is spherically symmetric, which means it has the same value at a given r in all directions, right? So it does not have angular preferences. And this is because the function uh, theta here, which uh, varies with the zenith angle theta, uh, for all quantum numbers L, except for L equals zero, which is the S states. So this is why for the S states, the probability density is spherically symmetric. Uh, but the probability density, as you can see for states with L uh, not equal to zero, uh, does have angular preferences, right? Uh, so they are not uh, spherically symmetric. Uh, and note here uh, that because the probability density is independent of the azimuth angle phi, it means that we can obtain a three-dimensional uh, picture of the probability density by rotating it about a vertical axis, okay? Uh, so as you can see for states uh, other than the S state, uh, the electron has more probability to exist in certain directions uh, than other directions. 
and uh, these uh, low patterns uh, have been shown to be significant in chemistry because they determine the way in which adjacent atoms interact with each other forming a chemical bond and so forming a molecule uh, so thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video